Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 9.5, the composition of functions. Okay, so the composition of functions basically looks like this. It's f of g, and uh, we would write it f of g like this, like fog. If you write f times g, that's f times g with a little dot. So this is the product, and that's not correct, so make sure you don't do that. Uh, so f of g is equal to f of g of x, and we can say f of g of x, or f at g at x. Um, and f is the what we call the outer function, and g is called the inner function. Okay, so let's do a few examples, and you'll get the hang of it. Um, so for this one, it gives us f of x and g of x, and wants us to find f of g of x. So basically what we're doing is we're finding f of g of x, and if you want to rewrite it, you can, uh, and that might help you because it is function notation. So we're doing f of g of x is root x, so we'll replace it with root x, and then wherever we see x in the original f of x, we're going to replace it with root x. So we do 2 root x plus 3, and that is f of g of x, that's it. To find f of g of 4, we can substitute wherever we see four x, we put the 4 in there. So this is 2 root 4 plus 3, so that's 2 times 2 which plus 3, so um, that ends up being 7. Another way we can do that is we can find g of 4. g of 4 is going to be equal to root 4, which is 2, and then we would find f of 2, and just plug it into our formula, 2 times 2 plus 3, 2x plus 3 which ends up being 7. So you could do it either way. Um, this way happens to be more useful if we are doing a graph or something like that, but this one is more useful if we had just have an algebraic expression already. So for example, if I had given you these two graphs, um, this is f of x right here, that's 2x plus 3, and this one, this blue one is g of x equals root x. So let's say I asked you to find g of f of uh, let's say 3, okay, so basically what we want to do is we want to find f of 3, and that's going to be, you go over to the x value, that's 3, f of 3 is 9, and so we want to find g of 9, and just go along and look for the g value at x equals 9, and that's going to be 3, so it actually ends up being 3. Okay, so that's how we do it if we were using a graph. Um, so let's go back up. Sketch f of g, f of g, and g of f. I've actually sketched them for you, but if you want, you could go ahead and graph them. Um, so don't look <laughs> and see if you can find see if you can find the correct um, sketches for these two. We already sketched f and g, and I showed it to you already. So um, basically, the easiest way to do that would just be to uh, find the the algebraic expression. So we do 2 root x plus 3, and that is 2 root x plus 3 is right here, uh, which we know, you know, it has a vertical stretch of 2, and it moves up 3, so that's how we know this one is f of g. I'm just going to label it right there. And in order to find g of f, Again, we can use algebra first and then graph it because we're pretty familiar with these functions. So g of f, that's going to be the um, g of 2x plus 3, uh, which ends up being because g is just root, so we're going to do root 2x plus 3. So you can see that this has a horizontal compression by a half, and um, if we wanted to graph it properly, we should really... Um, we should really factor it right there, so we get a horizontal compression by one half, and a vertical, sorry, a horizontal shift to the left by three over two, which you can see we've got right here. It starts at negative three over two, and it has its horizontal compression, so it's moved, is shifted in. So this is g of f, okay. And then it says determine the domains of the functions in part C. So <coughs> we're just going to go ahead and do that. And you can use the graph to do that. That's probably the easiest way if you do have to graph. Um, so the domain of F was X in R. It's the line. Um, the domain of G is X in R such that X is greater than or equal to 0 because that's root X. The domain of f of g, we just look at the graph, it's um, greater than or equal to 0. And for g of f, it's going to be x in r, such that x is greater than or equal to negative 3 over 2. Right? 
So that answers that question. And uh, we could use the graphs for this. Of course, this is kind of inefficient. If we don't have to graph, then we might have to find a different way to find the domains. And of course, that, that does exist. OK, so let's try this question. Um, example b, let f of x equal log base 2 of x and g of x equals root of negative x plus 4. So we want to find f of g in its domain and g of f in its domain. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is actually rewrite g of x and make it in the form I want, because I want to be factored um, for uh, the x values, right? So root of negative x minus 4. And then I'm going to find f of g. So f of g of x. We replace g of x with the equation root negative x minus 4, like that. And then we can replace it in the f of x. And of course, if you find that you can do this in less steps, that's fine. You can do that. Um, I'm just doing it slowly, just so everyone uh, knows what's going on. All right, so now we have to find the domain of this. And finding the domain is actually really, really tricky. Uh, well, not really, really tricky, but more tricky than finding f plus g or f minus g. Um, and the reason is because we can't just uh, find the intersection of their domain. OK, we actually have to think about how the domain of f and the range of g are going to be interacting. So. Um, I just drew this little diagram right here for you in order to kind of explain that. Um, here we have the domain of g because we're going to start with the inner function. And the domain of g in this case, actually let's write it out here. The domain of g is x in r such that x is less than or equal to 4. Um, the range of g is x in r, sorry, y in r. This is actually a classic mistake that a lot of people make on exams and things like that. They'll write the range is x, and of course it's not y in r, such that y is greater than or equal to 0. And for the domain of f, it's x in r, such that x is greater than 0. And the range of f is actually unlimited y in r. OK. So now that we have that written down, the domain of g is going to be the starting point. Okay, so it's got to be at least inside of the domain of G, uh, but it could be the whole of the domain of G, or it could just be a part of it. Okay, so my domain of G is x in R, such that x is less than or equal to 4. Now, to find the answer, this is going to give me numbers that are inside of the range of g. And I know my range of g is y greater than or equal to 0, right? So I want to know if all of these numbers are inside of the domain of f, because I can only use the numbers here that go inside of the domain of f. So I'm going to make this the domain of f, which I know is y greater than 0. And that actually happens to be inside of this, right? Because this subset is actually bigger than this subset. So I can use all of the numbers for the domain of f to get answers. Uh, which are going to be in the range of f, OK? So if I want to find the range of f of g, it's going to be a subset of the outer function, which I know is y in r, OK? So it's actually going to go to you know, this smaller subset here. Um, so you can see that I can use almost all the numbers from the range of g, but not quite all the numbers. I just can't have y equal to 0. So basically, I have to say that um, root of negative x minus 4 cannot equal 0, because that's one of the restrictions on the domain of f. And these should be matching. OK, so I, can, I have to restrict my domain of g so that it can match my domain of f. All right, so I'm just going to solve that. Um, so I want um, root negative x minus 4 to not equal 0. Um, and if we solve that, we can see that x is not equal to 4. So the domain of uh, g, f of g is equal to um, x in r such that x is less than 4. And if I do that, then I will have, I will be able to put all those numbers into the, into the f uh, f of x, and that would yield answers in the range. Okay, so the range of f of g ends up being everything that is in f, so y and r, like that. 
okay? So basically, I have to think about how the range of G and the domain of F are interacting. And once I do that, I can restrict my domain from G. Okay, so let's try it again with G of F because these are um, some interesting functions. And I'm just going to rewrite everything out again. F of X was equal to log base 2 of X and the dom sorry, G of X is equal to root of negative x minus 4. So that tells us the domain of f was um, x in r, such that x is greater than 0. The range of f was y in r, and then the domain of g, x in r, x less than or equal to 4. The range of g, y in r, such that y is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so if we want to find g of f of x, we're going to put g of log base 2 of x. So wherever we see x, we're going to replace it with log base 2, so it becomes root of negative log base 2 of x minus 4, like that. Okay, and that is my g of f of x, and I want to find the domain. So again, I'm just going to draw those diagrams, um, starting with the domain of the inner function x in r such that x is greater than 0. I'm going to take that and it's going to become the range of f, which is y in r. So I know that I'm definitely going to have to restrict some of those answers in he from here into here, right? Because the domain of g is x greater than, or sorry, x less than or equal to 4. So that's actually within the whole set of numbers. We want the number to be less than or equal to 4. So basically we want to restrict it so that, um, so that the square root is going to be, or sorry, so that log base 2 of x minus 4, or log base 2 of x is going to be less than or equal to 4. That's what I need to do. Okay, so let's solve that. Log base 2 of x has to be less than or equal to 4. Um, so if I just move that, it's going to be, actually let's just rearrange it. So x is going to be less than or equal to 2 to the 4. And if you just check it, like if you said, okay, it's going to be uh, 2 to the 3, then that would work. But 2 to the 5, um, that's not going to work, right? So we know that that is actually true. So x is less than or equal to 16. So that is my new domain. So the domain of g of f is x in r such that x is less than or equal to 16. If that's true, then this whole thing would be greater than or equal to 0, and then the whole thing would work, okay? And the range, because the whole uh, domain of g is being used, that means that the range is going to be the same as the range of g, so y in r such that y is greater than or equal to 0, and I can write that here. The range of g of f is y in r, y greater than or equal to 0. Okay, um, we'll do a lot more practice with this. I know it's a little confusing at first, but um, you know, it's, it just takes a little practice and, and you'll get used to it. Okay, so that's the end of example A and B. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we will be f continuing example C and D in the next video. If you just click here, it will take you there. I hope you enjoyed it and see you soon.